A drug bust in the city of Milan lands a man in jail. What the police department found during the bust isn't common to the city. Yeah, what the police department found during the bust is not common to the city, NBC 39's Jackson Overstreet. NBC 39 News at 10 is brought to you by Physicians Quality Care, where we treat you like family. Two locations, open seven days a week. Now, from your hometown news team, in the heart of downtown Jackson, this is NBC 39 News at 10. A drug bust in the city of Milan lands a man in jail. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm Sarah Blakely. And I'm Josh Shagbert. What police, what the police department found during that bust, though, is not common to the city. NBC 39's Jackson Overstreet has more. A tip to the Milan Police Department led to the arrest of this man, Jeremy Baldwin, who was charged with multiple drug offenses. A lot of different kinds of illegal narcotics, uh, pills, cocaine, and marijuana that was bagged up. And Milan PD also found something a little bit out of the ordinary with this drug bust. One of the most unique things that they found that day was some uh, gummies. The gummies were laced with THC, the main hallucinogenic chemical found in marijuana. They aren't commonly found in Milan, according to Chief Sellers. This, this is new to us. Um, a lot of our police officers are familiar with what gummies are, but it's not something that we've been seeing a lot of here lately. Chief Seller says that gummies can be more potent than normal marijuana, which can be dangerous for those who use them, especially children. Sellers wants parents to be aware of the drugs in case this bust is not a one-time occurrence. So they're not gummies like you go to the store and buy. You can look at them and tell that they're homemade, uh, and so they're kind of rough around the edges, and they look different than the ones you buy in the store. And Chief Seller says that if you do find gummies or other edibles in your child's possession, to bring him here to the Milan Police Department so they can dispose of him properly. In Milan, for NBC 39 News, I'm Jackson Overstreet.
Chief Meteorologist Chris Summers joining us with a look at our forecast. How are we looking tonight, Chris? Yeah, we're still seeing a, a little bit of rain coming through the area here. So a few scattered showers likely as you get into the overnight hours. Some of these showers could last even into early tomorrow morning as we wake up to your Thursday. Probably a little bit of rain around until at least the noon hour or so. And then the rain moves out of here and we get some sunshine and dry weather back into the area as you get ready for the end of the work week and especially for the upcoming weekend. So radar is showing the scattered showers coming back through the area, mainly light showers right now. Have been seeing a little bit of heavier rain down near Whiteville and heading to near Savannah as well. I do have some more rain coming from the west across uh, northeast Arkansas into west Tennessee, and it will look like the rain chances will increase and continue here into the overnight hours of tonight and early tomorrow morning before we uh, see temperatures actually start to warm back up as you get ready for the upcoming weekend. But here's what it looks like for your school day forecast. Rain around for 7 o'clock in the morning, 55 degrees will be the temperature. Still could see a few Few scattered showers through the lunch uh, lunchtime hour, but as you get to the afternoon hours, just cloudy skies around three o'clock. Temperature wise, a little bit cooler than we saw today, yeah, by about 10 degrees. Fit 65 degrees the high temperature for your Thursday afternoon, but still looking like dry weather for Friday, and that dry weather lasts into the weekend with a little bit warmer weather expected by early next week. And we'll talk more about that with your hometown forecast coming up in just a few more minutes. Chris, thank you so much. The Waffle House near Nashville, where four people were killed Sunday morning has reopened. The Antioch restaurant opened shortly after 9 o'clock this morning. Company executives say that the for the next month, 100% of sales from that location will go to the victims' families. Management said even though workers are still struggling, morale is good. And they praised James Shaw Jr. as a hero, the man who wrestled the gun away from the shooter. From staying aware to getting proper training, there are some precautions you can take to avoid a shooter situation. NBC 39's Camila Reda explains. It's a tragedy that hit close to home. A gunman opening fire inside a Waffle House near Nashville, killing four people. But what happens if you find yourself in a situation like this? EMA director Marty Clements says that when you are confronted with a dangerous situation, your body will either freeze fight or flight, depending on where it takes place. And that really depends on where you are. Just like Mr. Shaw, who did the one at the Waffle House, he was trapped and he was in a position he, he chose to go ahead and counter. He says it's important to get the proper training to defend yourself. CEO of MaxGuard Frankie Lax agrees with Clements and recommends trying to escape the situation first. You, you want to try to avoid a situation? You want to try to, to leave the situation if you, if you don't, don't feel comfortable. Uh, you want to try to, to get out of there. You want to try to leave. Uh, once again, if your gut tells you you're not safe, you're probably not safe. Jack shares some precautionary advice with us, like looking for hiding spots when you enter a building, like going under the table, and facing the exits instead of having your back towards them. Staying aware is one of the major pieces of advice that they gave so that the circumstance can be avoided as a whole. Always be looking out outside, looking in, in the uh, parking lot. See if you see anything strange. Don't just sit back and relax. Right now, the only place that I feel safe sitting back and relax is at home. It is impossible to prepare for a shooting, but taking the necessary precautions and always making a plan can help you escape a tragedy like the one in Nashville this weekend. For NBC 39 News, I'm Camila Rueda. As of this morning, the Jackson Football Club has a new home. The youth soccer organization held its ribbon cutting this afternoon on their new office space in North Jackson. The new space gives the group a more permanent facility for its coaches, administration and players to gather. Members of the group say that they now have a foundation for the future. I think it's great. I mean, we can, we've got a foundation now and then we can just look to keep building from there. Um, and hopefully get more people involved and situated so they know where the office is and they know where to come if they want more information. The Jackson Football Club is the largest soccer organization in West Tennessee, according to Baker. If you would like to know more about the group's programs, you can visit the website listed at the bottom of your screen. A local school district recognizing dozens of professionals who spend a little extra time with students after school. More than 450 students in the Jackson Madison County School District attend after school programs until their parents are able to pick them up. Susie Merriweather has been involved with with the program since it started three years ago. She describes the program as a fun and safe environment for students while parents work and she says she does it because she loves the kids. We always nurture them and 
I always tell them, we love you all and we're gonna treat you like you're ours. So they feel safe with us. And if the parents can't get here on time, which very rarely happens, then we assure them that they're going to be okay till they get here. During the after school program, students play games, do arts and crafts, exercise, and even finish their homework. The school system is thanking the district's 60 professionals who work in the after school programs by celebrating After School Professionals Appreciation Week this week. If you're sending the kids to summer camp this year, there's a new breed of camps that can make it fun for kids to learn tech and engineering skills that could one, lay, one day translate to a job. Liz McLaughlin has a roundup of the latest camp trends. Summer camp activities are leveling up. Now more programs are letting kids build, code, and fly. With drone camps on the rise. The kids get really excited when they're actually working with kind of the guts of the drone. Campers ages 11 to 17 actually get to build their own drones at Flymore Academy, wiring, soldering, and programming to prepare for liftoff. The parents love that uh, their kids are not just having fun with drones, but also learning some skills as well and learning some engineering concepts to go with it. Okay, this should be it. STEM and tech camps aim to give kids a learning experience without it feeling like school by pairing hands-on activities with topics that interest them. They're not just playing video games in the summer, right? They're learning how to make them. ID Tech Camp serves kids ages 7 and up with locations nationwide. Specialized programs teach marketable skills that could be the catalyst for a career in technology. There are 2.4 million open STEM jobs in the U.S. alone right now. That's why ID Tech is among many camps trying to attract more girls, launching a female-focused program called Alexa Cafe. Enrollments doubled over the last three years, but girls still make up less than 30% of campers. We've really got to spark that interest and nurture that interest, especially with girls. Directors hope that early start will fuel the future of the tech industry. Many of the specific programs fill up quickly, but it's not too late to sign up. There are options for overnight and day camps that still have spaces available. You can learn more there on your screen at idtech.com. In consumer news tonight, the vast majority of Americans say they don't ever plan to move. According to Bankrupt.com, 62% of home homeowners plan to stay put and never move from their current home. Meanwhile, 79% anticipate staying in their current home for the next five years, and the likelihood of remodeling exceeds the likelihood of moving to a new home across all age and income brackets. Analysts say this is one reason why prospective home buyers are finding a real lack of quality, affordable inventory. And Wayfair now has its own shopping holiday. The online furniture retailer is calling today Way Day. According to the company, shoppers can expect discounts that are comparable to Black Friday deals. Discounted items range from non-stick roasting pans to game tables. Wayfair says they chose spring to hold the event because many uh, consumers tend to move or clean out their homes and maybe looking to purchase new items. It only lasts for 24 hours, though. The Boston-based company says Way Day could return next year if it performs well. Still a couple hours to get on there and <laughs> show whatever you want. Exactly. Yeah. Spring cleaning always means adding more things well, to yeah, home. It always throw, seems to go that throw way. Throw one thing away and bring three, three things back exactly. in. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect way to do it. But we'll get rid of the rain here overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning. Bring some warmer temperatures back for the weekend. Highs today weren't bad, though. 74 degrees the high before the rain did move in. Our normal high is 75. Picked up about a quarter of an inch of rain so far. May pick up another quarter inch overnight tonight or early tomorrow. But then dry weather and warmer weather returning as we get ready for early next week. We'll talk about it when we come back.
And welcome back everyone. Temperatures today made it back into the low to mid 70s in most areas. Now as before the rain came in, we had a little bit of rain around the area here late this afternoon into the early evening hours. Had a little break then, but now more rain moving back in. And we see some of that rain out there right now. 55 degrees, the current temperature here in Jackson. Dew points in the low 50s. North northwest winds around three. Also seeing uh, along with the rain, some fog developing across the area as well. As of last hour, our fog visibility is down to four miles here in Jackson. So let's take a look at our radar again, showing the rain that's making its way through our area again, seeing some of that light rain pushing through as we speak right now, mainly seeing the lighter rain from about Jackson to the north. Now, if you go a little further south of Jackson, though, in uh, parts of southwest uh, Tennessee, that's where you see some of the heavier rain. The yellows and the reds on our radar indicating where the heavier rain is at. And we'll pick up maybe another half an inch or quarter of an inch of rain across our region here overnight tonight and through our early morning hours of our Thursday. You can see more rain is off to our west over in northeast Arkansas. So we have some more rain to go through overnight and into early tomorrow morning. But I do think most of the rain will probably be out of here by the noon hour or so on Thursday and maybe see a couple peaks of sun by Thursday afternoon. Temperatures will be a little bit cooler. Looks for highs in the mid 60s as we head to Thursday afternoon. Now here's our future radar. I'm going to show you exactly where the rain will be at and at what time we're going to be seeing the rain uh, moving through the area. Here is 10 o'clock again seeing those showers passing through. Uh, much of West Tennessee. Now, as you put this into motion, and we'll see some of the heavier rain basically staying down to the south. May get a little break in here once again around midnight or so before another batch of some showers move back through the area. Here it is 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, we're still seeing the rain pushing through uh, much of West Tennessee. Now, areas just a little to our north, though, Union City, maybe around Paris, even Greenfield, may see a few breaks by early tomorrow morning from the rain. This low pressure system that's moving across the region will actually be kind of a slow mover, so we may keep the rain around through the early morning hours and into even the morning hours of our Thursday. Thursday. Here we go into about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Still seeing a little bit of circulation of some of the rain coming back through, but again, because of that low pressure system tracking just down to our south. And even at noontime, still seeing some light rain in the forecast area. It just depends how fast the system moves through. And a lot of our computer models are going to have it moving through a little bit faster than our, our radar here showing it. And so I think we should clear out by about noontime or so and bring some clouds back in the afternoon hours. But anything, any way you look at it, it does look like some cooler temperatures are arriving as we head to our Thursday. So here's what we expect to see. Again, occasional rain through the morning hours. And that rain kind of turned over to drizzle. Uh, maybe just some light sprinkles by the time we get to around the noon hour or so. Mostly cloudy skies otherwise in the afternoon. But those temperatures will be a little bit cooler. Looking for highs only in the low to mid 60s. But as we get to Friday and into the weekend, sunshine and pleasant weather is back in the forecast. High temperatures as we get to the weekend should be back in the low 70s in most areas. Looking pretty nice, especially for the last weekend of April. Here's what it looks like then your hour by hour forecast again showing those rain showers around tomorrow morning around six o'clock and then get out to about noontime. Those uh, rain showers should be out there afternoon hours, mainly cloudy, but temperatures should get back in the mid 60s as we head to Thursday afternoon. Our normal high this time of year is 75, so it'll be about 10 degrees below that for Thursday afternoon. Here's what it looks like on our forecast map. Yeah, the showers kind of hanging around much of Middle Tennessee, but actually getting back here to West Tennessee as well. Going to see where that defining line will be. I think it should be just a little bit further to our east by noon or so. Behind the system, yeah, a little bit cooler weather coming in for at least one day, but lots of dry weather back in the forecast for the rest of the work week and into the upcoming weekend with temperatures getting back to where they should be this time of year. That means 70s in the forecast for both Saturday and Sunday. Overnight lows tonight drop back in the low to mid 50s. Some occasional rain or drizzle out there. Could be some patchy fog by tomorrow morning as well. Here's your seven day forecast, which is brought to you by GCO, the floor trader. 65 the high for your Thursday. Back in the 70s, though, for Friday, 72. And we'll keep those 70s around for the weekend. Sunshine and pleasant weather both Saturday and Sunday with low 70s. But look at next week. Yeah, we end uh, April on Monday, 77. And for the first day of May, kind of a nice little May basket there for you. 81, our high temperature Tuesday afternoon, mostly sunny skies, upper 70s, even on Wednesday of next week. So after we get through the rain tomorrow, really some dry weather and really some nice uh, pleasant spring weather, maybe even a little summer weather early next week. So looking like some great weather to get out and do just about anything outdoors this weekend for sure. And no rain in that forecast I see except for tomorrow, but. Right, and that one that goes out of here, that looks like some dry weather and some beautiful weather for the rest of the work week and right into early next week. We'll take that. Thanks, Chris. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
White House tonight still defending President Trump's nominee to be Veterans Affairs Secretary. Dr. Ronnie Jackson, the White House physician, denies damaging allegations that include overprescribing medications. Jackson's confirmation hearing has been indefinitely postponed while senators investigate the allegation. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the latest from Washington. The White House circling the wagons around Veterans Affairs Secretary nominee Dr. Ronnie Jackson as the Senate VA committee investigates accusations of creating a toxic work environment, drinking on the job, and improperly prescribing medications. Dr. Jackson's record uh, as a White House physician has been impeccable. In fact, because Dr. Jackson has worked within arm's reach of three presidents, he has received more vetting than most nominees. Jackson's confirmation hearing scheduled for today has been postponed indefinitely. It's a big, big problem uh, to the point where some in the White House even call him the candy man. Senators concerned about the misconduct allegations and Jackson's lack of experience. He has never managed anything like the Veterans Administration, uh, which spends about $180 billion a year, employs about 370,000 people, and provides care to about 9 million veterans. Mr. Speaker! That is French President Emmanuel Macron addressed Congress, publicly asking President Trump not to leave the Iran nuclear deal and to rejoin the Paris Accord to stop global warming. We are killing our planet. Let us face it. There is no planet B. Macron getting standing ovations from lawmakers and a rare display of unity on Capitol Hill. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Up next, we'll hear from the Tennessee Titans as minicamp workouts begin this week. Plus, the Braves were looking to get back to their winning ways in Cincy tonight. We've got the highlights next. Lorenzo Scalise entered the tournament ranked fourth in the conference, and the senior is confident that his team will finish out the year strong. And welcome back to NBC 39. I'm Nicole Menner. The Tennessee golf team returned to the course today as the SEC championships began in Georgia. 
Milan, Italy native Lorenzo Scalise entered the tournament ranked fourth in the conference, and the senior is confident that his team will finish strong. Uh, achieve a lot of things this year, of course, being my last one, but I just wanted to just set a good role for the other guys because as the senior, um, you just want to leave like a good legacy and just try to set a good standard for them. The team has always been very important to me, so that was probably my main goal. I think we're in a great uh, spot right now going to the SEC Championship. Uh, everybody is taking care of business. Everybody's really excited to just start the SECs and the postseason, and you know, as my last year, I've never been to the finals, so I, I really hope that this team has a great chance to reach NCAA finals. Tennessee is currently sitting tied for second place, while Scalise finished in second himself, just one stroke out of the lead with a three under 67. With the NFL draft coming up tomorrow night, Tennessee's Rashawn Golden is ready to take his skills to the pros. The former Vol defensive back is ranked among the top 100 draft prospects by NFL analysts after having 65 tackles and three forced fumbles for UT during the 2017 season. During his overall career with Tennessee, he lined up at safety and cornerback, finishing with 140 tackles, including nine and a half for loss. Golden leads a group of balls likely to be selected, and you can watch all the action tomorrow night as the draft kicks off at 8 o'clock. The Tennessee Titans opened their voluntary minicamp yesterday, and it was a day that new coach Mike Vrabel had been looking forward to since being hired three months ago. Ahead of today's practice, Coach Vrabel and some of the players spoke about getting back out on the field. There were some too many balls on the ground, um, but I think for the most part, it was, um, it was good. I think they, they knew what to do, and uh, they were excited. Uh, the, the guys, I thought, hustled. Never going to be perfect. That's the thing I try to explain to them is that football is not a perfect game. It's a game that's, uh, that's played um, by, by grown men, big men that, that move fast, and that's, things aren't going to look like the pictures a lot of times that we put on the board. We have an opportunity to, to learn and um, to take what we're learning from the, from the meeting rooms and put it out on the field. Uh, I think it's huge for all of us. And, uh, I'm glad and happy we're able to do that. And it, it's awesome to be back out there. It's awesome to, to play ball. And um, it's, it's fun to go out there, see some new faces, but just to go out there and compete, it's a, it's a blast. Well, you know, it's OTA practice, man. Yeah, getting used to our new coaches, man. I think we're doing pretty good, you know, learning the schemes. And I think the biggest thing right now, you got to continue to have fun. And that's what our team is doing. We're having fun and enjoying it. The moment that all baseball players dream of finally came for Ronald Acuna Jr. late last night. The top outfield prospect in baseball got the call from the Atlanta Braves ahead of tonight's game in Cincinnati, and the 20-year-old enters the majors as the youngest player in the league. And there he is, just taking it all in from the dugout. The Braves were on board early and would tack on another with a Johan Camargo double to left field in the third, 2-0 Atlanta. Fifth inning, and Ozzie Albies would send a rocket for his seventh home run of the season, extending that lead to 3-0. And then come the eighth inning, the Reds had the 4-3 lead. But after Ronald Acuna recorded his first career hit, Kurt Suzuki would bring him in. Acuna scoring his first run as an Atlanta Brave. And in the ninth, they would take the lead after Johan Camargo again does it, hitting a chopper, deflecting off the glove, bringing in the go-ahead run. A.J. Minter would come in to get the saves as the Braves win it 5-4. to four. Very cool to see a young player like that get the call up and live a mm -hmm. every kid's fantasy mm -hmm. of playing in the Major and League Baseball. I think baseball. it was his fourth at bat he finally got that hit. So yeah. happy for him, and they got the win. So what a yeah. good start for him. Great day for him. Nicole, thanks. Chris has a final check of that forecast right after this.
taking a final look at our seven-day forecast brought to you by GCO, the floor trader. Have some rain overnight tonight. Could be some patchy fog by tomorrow as well. Keeping those rain showers around at least for the morning hours. I think by lunchtime or shortly after lunch, we should see the rain come to an end. 65 degrees, so a little bit cooler for your Thursday, but back in the 70s and dry weather returning for Friday and right into the weekend. Lots of sunshine too on both Saturday and Sunday. Our high temperatures will stay in the low 70s, right about where we should be this time of year. Normal highs are in the mid 70s, and those like that we'll get to that next week. We'll see highs in the upper 70s on Monday, low 80s for high temperatures by May 1st on Tuesday, and upper 70s continuing with dry weather through the middle part of next week. So after we get through the rain tomorrow, looking pretty good as we get ready for the end of April and first part of May. Yeah, enjoy the weekend and Even all the other week. temperatures we have. That's right. Chris, thanks. Thanks for watching. Have a great night. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Follow us online. Like us on Facebook and visit our website, wnbjtv.com.